So, for the third part of this series, I got myself a Game Boy Pocket in kind of rough condition. Um, as you can see, it's missing the back cover, it's got twinkle over it. Buttons still work, it does turn on, it's got no sound, but yeah, it should be an easy fix. I picked this up for $45 and they do sell for a reasonable amount. So, let's chuck some batteries in it and see how it goes. I bought the splash card as well to go with it. These are really good, they can just play any ROM and you can save to them. I've found it's worked really well in the past and it should help it sell because not many of them are selling. As we can see it all works, um, there is no sound but everything else seems to be working okay. Even the contrast which is good. So all the stuff I ordered finally arrived. Um, here's the new case for all the little bits that come with it. Also got myself a new speaker because the one was broken. And, and this is the new screen as well. It's a backlit one. This is kind of where the problem started to begin. Unfortunately, the cheap Chinese case and screen had a few problems. You'll see later in the video. First time I had to use these stupid little tri wing screws that Nintendo insists on having. It's a bit of a pain. As you can see there is a little bit of corrosion on the bottom of the Nintendo, it's not too bad and it's not really causing a problem but we will clean that up later on. Now we get the new screen all set and in into the new case. Now this was a relatively easy process, nothing really went wrong here. It's all pretty self-explanatory too, I have to say, it's not, not too hard. I did end up putting the wrong cover on here, or screen protector I should say. I found out after I ordered the screen that it's actually slightly smaller than the original one, which is just another annoyance really. Also inside this case, one of the button holders is broken a little bit. Not a lot, it's just the... Um, the corner edge that holds the button and you don't really notice when using but it's just still kind of another annoying part. So yeah, as you see it's, it's kind of reasonably smaller, it's not too bad but eh, I don't know when you're paying like $80 for a screen kit you kind of wish it was the same size.
Here we're just fixing the speaker. Sorry about the weird blue lighting. I don't know really what was causing that. I did also give the board a bit of a scrub up with some isopropyl alcohol and a brush. So it's looking a bit cleaner, which is good. Now that that's all done, we just throw everything together and tested it out. And this is when I realized that the screen was dead and it just would not work. As you can hear, the sound comes on, but absolutely nothing displayed. So after like a month of back and forward with the reseller, he sent me a few ribbon cables thinking that was the problem, but it didn't end up being the problem. It was actually a broken screen or like the bit where the connector went into the screen. So it ended up taking ages because each time you'd send a different part thinking it was that. Also notice you can see that the case doesn't really fit that well. Um, there's also this crack below the D-pad, which is a bit annoying. All in all, the quality of the um, Chinese upgrade kit just really isn't that good. I probably wouldn't go with it again. But as you can see, it's all working now. That nice back clip just ended up taking way too long to get this done. Nice satisfying feel on that. But yeah, I did some extensive testing with this Game Boy and with the flash cart and everything worked really well. Get it up for sale and hopefully get our money back. I did end up spending way too much on this, like $175, so I really don't know if I will get my money back on it. It's probably one of the worst investments yet. So hopefully in part four we'll do a bit better.